Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how the wide receiver zero strategy works, and then I'm going to show you how I do it in a mock draft. Now, if you missed yesterday's video, I actually talked about the running back zero strategy. Now, this is pretty much the exact opposite. In the wide receiver zero strategy, you're not going to be drafting a wide receiver in the first four to five rounds of the draft, four or five, depending on where you see the value on the board. Now, for me, the wide receiver zero strategy really has no no pick where it's the best. Whereas for the running back zero strategy, I like to be towards the back part of the draft. For this one, I'm going to go towards the middle. It is a 12-team draft. I'm going to be pick eight in a PPR redraft league. Now, why do people like the wide receiver zero strategy? And why do I personally like it now? Because I think that the wide receiver value late in drafts is very good. But after the first 20 running backs caught the board, even the first 15, it kind of starts to feel like the running back value is decreasing immensely by every single running back getting picked. And when that happens, since in these drafts, the running backs go so early and often if you wait on what on running back it typically sucks ass because the guys available are terrible whereas if you rate if you wait I should say on the wide receiver position there's going to be a lot later for you because not a lot of people go with the running back zero strategy anymore so I'm going to be explaining explaining the wide receiver zero strategy like I said in this video we're doing a 12 team PPR mock draft from the eighth overall slot the roster positions of the mock is one quarterback two running backs two wide outs a tight end flex kicker defense and six bench spots so let's get right into it on fantasypros.com. If you guys do end up enjoying this video, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. It's free and I'm going to be helping you guys win every single fantasy league that you are in by making videos every single day throughout the off seasons and every single day during the fantasy football and the NFL season. So the first couple picks of the draft are going to be pretty much exactly the same, just a, the same cast of a couple of guys every single time. So Christian McCaffrey was the first overall pick followed by Saquon Barkley, Michael Thomas, Dalvin Cook, Ezekiel Elliott, Calvin really De Derek Henry. So Michael Thomas typically goes from pick one to pick five. I never really see him going past pick five. The running backs typically CMC is the one. Sometimes Saquon is the one, but to me, CMC is the clear one. He's just the safest. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, one wide receiver has been taken because a lot of people wait to try to get the wide receivers later. That's why the value is so good later, and that's why the running back value later is absolute dookie. So we're going to go ahead here and go with my favorite running back still available, and that is Joe Mixon. Now, there's going to be people in the comments. I often debate them in every single video. They talk about, oh, the Cincinnati Bengals are this. The Cincinnati Bengals are that. Joe Mixon is this. Joe Mixon is not that good. Blah, 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 blah. If you saw Joe Mixon last year at the beginning of the season, you would have thought this guy was a garbage can. You would have thought this guy played D3 college football. But then the back half of the season, you saw who Joe Mixon truly was and who Joe Mixon has showed you who he was in the past. A certified fucking beast. Down the stretch, he was putting up games that were amazing. He was doing this with who? The season he played with Ryan Finley and Andy Dalton. Now, who do they bring in? They bring in big dick Joe Burrow, smoking Joe Burrow because he was smoking on that couch after he won that national championship. They have a better line. Last year, they drafted an O-lineman in the first round, but in typical Cincinnati Bengals fashion, the guy just breaks his leg. He breaks his back. He broke everything. He doesn't get to play. Now he comes back. That offensive line is not that bad. They're in a division where they can compete and they bring in a new quarterback. You know what the key to new quarterback success sometimes is? Where they dump the fucking ball off to the guy standing three inches in front of him. And you don't know who the guy standing three inches away from him is going to be. It's going to be Joseph Mixon. I think Joe Mixon has a great year, both in standard PPR and half PPR. He's that pass catching upside. He's going to get over a thousand yards. And I think the potential for his touchdowns is very, very high. I think he has a great season. I would not be surprised if Joe Mixon finished inside the top five running back. So abiding by the wide receiver zero strategy, we can easily pick my option, who I would have picked regardless if we were doing running back zero or wide receiver zero here, at pick 108. So after we went with Mr. Mr. Joe Mixon, a bunch of guys came off the board. So looking at the draft board, after Joe Mixon was Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, Austin Eckler, Julio Jones, Tyree Kill, Nick Chubb, Aaron Jones, Chris Godwin. So towards the back end of the draft of the first round and the set in the beginning of the second round is where you're gonna see a lot of the wide receivers get taken. Typically in the first seven picks, there's either one or two wide receivers going. And then with the la the next part of the picks, there's gonna be like six wide receivers taken or five wide receivers taken because that's where the wide receivers typically go after those top end running backs fly off the board. 
board. So we are doing a running back or a wide receiver zero strategy. My bad. So we're not going to be going ahead and picking a guy like Al Robinson, Kenny Galladay, Mike Evans, or DJ Moore. We're going to go ahead and select the best running back still on the board. And to me, it is a bit of a controversial decision. Do I want Josh Jacobs or do I want Kenyon Drake? Now, we went with Mr. Joe Mixon at the beginning, who some might not deem as not safe, a bit more risky. And I agree. He kind of is a bit risky. But at the same time, I feel he's safe because I know what he's going to do and he is going to produce. Now, who's safer between Drake and Josh Jacobs? Personally, I think it's Josh Jacobs. Drake, at the end of the year, after he got traded from the Miami Dolphins, after the Miami Dolphins decided, fuck it, we're just going to tank. Give me Kenyon Drake. And that's what they did. They just traded away Kenyon Drake. The Cardinals took him. Drake blew up the last couple weeks of the season. Josh Jacobs was pretty solid all season. Now, what did the coaching of the Las Vegas Raiders say? The Raiders told us, hey, we're going to try to pass the ball to the running back. We're going to try to get Josh Jacobs more pass-catching opportunities. Because if you can actually see, Josh Jacobs last year did not really get any pass-catching opportunities. He was only catching, he only had 20 receptions for 166 yards. So, in 2020, I think he gets more work in the passing game. And if he gets over 1,000 rushing yards, I think he could personally be the rushing leader in the NFL. Last season, it was pretty much going to be Nick Chubb. And then they kind of benched him. And then Derrick Henry balled out Week 17 for the Titans. So, he didn't get it. But I think Josh Jacobs could be the rushing title owner in 2020. I think the Las Vegas Raiders are going to be prone, not prone, they're going to be wanting to run the goddamn ball like those hats say that the Colts wore after they beat the Chiefs. Run the damn ball, run the damn ball, Las Vegas Raiders. Josh Jacobs is going to be my pick here in the second round. So we're going to keep abiding by this wide receiver zero strategy. And we are probably going to pick a running back in the next round. What I typically like to do in real drafts is go two running backs in the first three rounds, whether that's round one and three, one and two, two and three. It does not typically matter, but most of the time in the first round, I like to go with that running back. Now, looking on the board, we are kind of in the middle of the draft where we are picking at pick eight. It's still closer to the back, but around that sixth spot. Obviously, after that, went we, after we went Josh Jacobs, Cooper Cup came off the board, followed by Miles Sanders, Kenyon Drake, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes. So the two big tight ends, two big quarterbacks come off the board in the second round. Typically, the second or third round is where you're going to see them coming off the board. Pat Mahomes or Lamar Jackson could go in the first round of your league, though, depending how crazy the motherfuckers in your league are. Notice how we've entered the third round, and only one running back has been taken because the running back value falls off, and a lot of people jump on these wide receivers. Mike Evans, Al Robinson, Kenny Galladay, DJ Moore, Leonard Fournette, then Odell, then Juju. Two guys that, to me are spicy picks. Odell, I don't like at all. I think the Browns are going to be very run heavy with Nick Chubb. They bring in Kevin Stefanski, O coordinator of the mini sort of Vikings. They say, hey, what are we going to do? We're going to run the goddamn ball like we did in Minnesota. Get Dalvin Cook involved is what they did last year and the year before. What they're going to do this year is get Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt involved. And you know what they're going to say? Odell, you diva, piece of shit, pussy. We're not going to throw the ball to you. That probably won't happen. He'll probably get the ball, but I don't want anything to do with Odell. Odell's always going to be dubbed as a top 12 wide receiver, and he just won't be able to fucking do it. I'm not going to jam this down your guys' throats anymore. Odell Beckham Jr. is going to bust. He is not worth a third-round pick, and if you want to take a load in the face like your name was Mia Malkova, then draft Odell Beckham. If not, stay safe. Don't be silly. Wrap your willy. Don't draft Odell Beckham. Juju is a bit dicey. Some Sometimes I'm looking at him, and I like him. Other times I'm looking at him, I'm like, eh. In the third round's okay value, but if Big Ben gets hurt, he's fucked. That's my opinion on him. I think he if Big Ben stays healthy, Juju will be amazing. If Big Ben gets hurt, he'll suck. It's that simple. It is that simple. So you're playing that game in the third round. Would I want to take that? Probably not. So looking at our team through two rounds, we have already Joe Mixon and Josh Jacobs. We got J and J on the starting roster by six and nine. Nice. So right now we're not going wide receiver, even though I don't want anything to do with fucking Amari Cooper or Adam Thielen right here at this pick. So we're going to be having to take a running back in the third round or a tight end. I like Mark Andrews' value, but I think we can get Mark Andrews in the fourth round. So we're going to go ahead and actually select a running back that I think has potential. Now, he's going to be our flex, so I'm not counting on him being an RB1 like most people in the industry are, and that is Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, running back out of LSU. Now, what happened in LSU last season. They had Joe Brady, the offensive coordinator, guys like O coordinator of Jesus Christ himself for the LSU Tigers. Now, what happens? They win the national championship. Clyde Edwards Hilaire tears it up. Joe Burrow tears it up. Justin Jefferson tears it up. The offense looks amazing. 
amazing. And Coach O was screaming, go Tigers. So what's going to happen in 2020? Now, in the first round of the NFL draft, we get all the way to pick 32. We're like, how has no fucking running back been taken? The Chiefs could take Jonathan Taylor here. The Chiefs could take Swift here. The Chiefs will take this running back. You want to know who they pick? CEH, the guy who most people did not think was going to go in the first round. They believed in him. At pick 32 in the first round, the Chiefs get up to the podium, not the real podium because this was an online draft like your fantasy draft. He gets up there. He says, Roger Goodell says, CEH to the Kansas City Chiefs. Andy Reid loves this guy. Andy Reid loves the workhorse running back in that system. That's why people love Damian Williams last year, and now these same motherfuckers are fading Clyde Edwards Hilaire. This. Where he goes in a lot of drafts, I will fade him. Where he goes in the first round is crazy. In the second round is crazy. But in the third round, I'm willing to take my chance on a guy on the one of the most electric offenses in the NFL. Now, you could debate it's Baltimore. It could be Kansas City. It's one of those two teams. And Clyde edwards Lair is going to be getting a lot of dump-off opportunities from Pat Mahomes. He's going to get a lot of rushing opportunities from Pat Mahomes. And I think that he could have a great year. Am I taking him in the first round? Fuck no. Am I taking him in the second round? Fuck no. But in the third round, I'll be willing to do it. All the other running backs kind of behind him are very worrisome now, especially with Chris Carson kind of getting fucked by them adding another running back. So after we went with Mr. CEH, my least favorite wide receiver in the NFL was selected. We're going to have to go here. It was Amari Cooper. Fuck you, Amari Cooper. This guy is hot. He's cold. He's in. Then he's out. He's up. Then he's down. Hopefully that did get me uh, banned off of YouTube because of how good my singing voice was of that song. After Amari Cooper goes Zach Gertz, another bum. Chris Carson, kind of worried about now. Keenan Allen, Todd Gurley, who just has that arthritis knee, who I'm scared of. Calvin Ridley, Colton Sutton, then another rookie running back in Jonathan Taylor. I think Jonathan Taylor's an excellent fourth-round pick, but he's this guy's RB1. Don't do that. Don't have Jonathan Taylor as your RB1 because it's going to take a couple of weeks for him to become the starting running back. So we're abiding by the wide receiver zero strategy. We made it to round four without drafting a single wide receiver. And it's going to be easy to pass round four because the guy I wanted is still on the board. And that is Mr. Maki Mac Andrews. Mark Andrews last season stepped hot onto the scene and legitimately bitch slapped defenses in 2019. In 2018, he wasn't that much of an option. But now Lamar Jackson becomes the starting quarterback. Mark Andrews decides to absolutely... Absolutely run a train on defenses. 64 receptions, 98 targets, 852 yards. Not one, not two, not three. All the numbers in between. 10 fucking touchdowns for Mark Andrews. What's he going to do in 2020? Probably 10 fucking touchdowns again. He could be getting even more work because you know what they did with his teammate? They said, Hayden Hurst, get out of here for a second round pick to the Atlanta Falcons. I love Hayden Hurst. I love Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews last year finished as a top 10 tight end. He's going to finish as number one, two, or three this year. I'm kind of indecisive. Some days I think Mark Andrews could be the best because of how electric the Baltimore Ravens offense is. But then I realized, hey, they might be able to figure it out. They might be able to figure out how to stop the run, blah, blah, blah. But what happens if they start the run? They stop the run. They have to start passing. And the best wide receiver on the Baltimore Ravens is not a wide receiver. It's a tight end in Mr. Maki Mock Andrews. That's where to go with, with in the fourth round. If you guys have enjoyed this video thus far, please go down below and click that subscribe button it's free and I'm gonna lead you guys to win your fantasy football title you can kiss that shit like you feel like a goddamn legend so after we drafted Mr. Maki Mock Andrews AJ Green came off the board followed by Adam Thielen Deshaun Watson Robert Woods Melvin Gordon Le'Veon Bell Devin Singletary T.Y. Hilton AJ Brown Devontae Parker Tyler Lockett Stephon Diggs DK Metcalf and David Johnson woo, woo, woo. shout out to the fantasy footballers those guys are excellent so AJ Green gets picked after I picked Mark Andrews what are these guys smoking who want A.J. Green? This guy gets hurt every year. Last season, he played zero games. In his last four seasons, he has played less than half of the goddamn games. Why do you want that on your roster? Why in the titty fuck do you want that on your roster? I have no idea. Will the guy even play on the Bengals this year? Who knows? They tagged him. He could get his ass shipped off. I don't believe in him. Plain and simple, I just don't believe in A.J. Green. So I'm not going to fucking draft them. Don't draft them in the fourth round because that is crazy. Now we have to go ahead and attack the wide receiver position. And luckily, in these drafts, the wide receiver position is plentiful. It is easy to find a wide receiver that you like in the fifth, sixth, and seventh round. We got our three running backs. We got our tight end. We're probably going to draft two wide receivers in a row here, if not three. So first off, we have a bunch of guys I love here. 
DJ Chark, Terry McLaurin, Tyler Boyd. DJ Chark of the Jacksonville Jaguars, obviously kind of a more risky pick here, which is why I wouldn't go for him, because I'm not sure how good they will be, how good will Gardner Minshew be. He's clearly the one on the team. They bring in LaVishka Chenault. I think DJ Chark is fine, but I'd rather go with one of my other guys, Terry McLaurin or Tyler Boyd. I kind of flip back and forth on whether I like McLaurin more or Boyd more, both kind of in similar, not really similar situations at all. Terry McLaurin's clearly the best wide receiver on Washington. Tyler Boyd's in a competition with him, garbage-ass AJ Green. There's some other guys around him, but I think he might be safer. But I'm going to go with the upside here with Terry McLaurin of the Washington Redskins. Him and Dwayne Haskins went to college together, and they somehow lost all that chemistry. Dwayne Haskins somehow forgot, after a year of not playing college football and going into the NFL, how to throw the ball to his best wide receiver in college. I don't fucking get it. I think Terry McLaurin has a great sophomore season. I think he balls out again. It doesn't matter that he's on the Washington Redskins because if they're down, you know what happens when you're down? You have to pass to get back in the game. Terry McLaurin here in the fifth round. So we have successfully completed the wide receiver zero strategy. If you want, you could draft the quarterback here or another running back. But I'm going to go ahead and draft my wide receiver after four rounds of abiding by the wide receiver zero role and we are rule and we are going to go get Terry McLaurin here of the Washington Redskins. So after we went with Mr. Terry McLaurin, we're likely going to look wide receiver again unless the running back value is immense here and I'm not sure it is. I think I might much rather wait and get a wide receiver that I like. So after we went with Terry McLaurin, Darrell Waller, Kenneth Board, followed by Maki Mock Ingram, Dak Prescott, James Conner, Kyler Murray, DJ Chark, Julian Edelman, and Russell Wilson. So typically you're going to see the first two quarterbacks come off the board in the second or third round, like I said, Lamar and Mahomes. And then Deshaun, Dak, Kyler, and Wilson typically go closer together. Deshaun actually went in the fourth round. I really disagree with that. I don't want Deshaun Watson as the third quarterback off the board strictly because they got rid of his best option, a guy who you throw the ball within 10 feet of, and the guy goes and gets it. He has like a circle around him. He's like, bam, bam, bam catches the ball ever. No, I know it's not going to happen. That's not going to happen when you have Brandon Cooks who gets hurt three games in. When you have Will Fuller who gets hurt four games in. I don't know. So I ain't touching that. We're going to go ahead and get it yet another wide receiver. And the guy I wanted last round is still here, Tyler Boyd. Like I said, this guy's going to have an electric season yet again. His past two seasons, 90 receptions, 76 receptions, over 100 targets, over 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns, and five touchdowns, respectively. Todd, Tyler Boyd, I should say, good with A.J. Green. Good without A.J. Green. Better with A.J. Green than better without A.J. Green, but still good either way. He's a top 20 wide receiver you're finding in the sixth round. It is an easy pick, an easy smash for me. I'm probably going to own Tyler Boyd in 100% of my leagues, except for the leagues where my friends actually listen to the videos and then they draft them ahead of me because fuck you, Nick. You told me who to pick, so I'm going to take him. Tyler Boyd here in the sixth round, easy pick for me. I really think he has a great season yet again. So through six rounds, we have Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs, Terry McLaurin, Tyler Boyd, Maki Mark Andrews, and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. So right now, we're not going to be looking for quarterback. We're not going to be looking for wide receiver. We're probably going to go running back here because of who was on the board. But looking at the draft board from before, after we went with Tyler Boyd, Jared Cook came off the board, followed by Gronk. Don't draft Gronk in the sixth round. He's not going to play a full season. He hasn't played a full season since 2000. And 11. After we went with Rob, after Robin Gronkowski at the board, Jarvis Landry, David Montgomery, DeAndre Swift, Hollywood Brown, Debo Samuel, Brandon Cooks, Michael Gallup, Matt Ryan, Josh Allen, amazing pick in the seventh round, Marvin Jones, Raheem Mostert, and Carson Wentz. So will I have regretted drafting Tyler Boyd instead of getting a fourth running back? No, because you want to know who's available? My main man, Karate Kick Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt last season in just eight games showed his value to the Browns. He played excellent. He tore it up. He was able to run the ball and catch the ball. He's going to get like five targets a game, probably come down with four of them. That's four free points. He's going to do good. I can see it. Stefanski is a run-heavy coach. They're going to run the ball, and if he gets 10 touches a game in the running game and then gets five receptions a game, the guy is going to be lethal in the seventh round, a very safe flex option every single week, like the guy going below him has been in the past in James White. So we're going to go ahead and select Kareem Hunt here in the seventh round goddamn round so after we go with him we're probably going to be looking towards the wide receiver core unless the running back i want falls straight to us so looking at the draft board after we went with karate kick kareem hunt marlon mack came off the board followed by carry on johnson Tariq cohen will fuller christian kirk james crowder philip Lindsay, and damian williams if you guys have enjoyed this video thus far please click that subscribe button it's free and it's also my birthday as you're watching this i turned the big two one gonna get crunk you know what the kids do these days that's what we're gonna do 
Thank you guys all. I love you all, though. Um, this year has been amazing for me, and I hope that my 21st year on this earth is better than last year. Last year, I grew a lot. This year, we're going to get even bigger until we hit the moon. So join in. Let's hit the moon together. After I'm with Kareem Hunt, Marlon Mack came out the board, followed by Carrion Johnson, Tariq Cohen, Will Fuller, Christian Kirk, Jameson Crowder, Bill, or, uh, and Damian Williams. So we have one, two, three, four running backs, and only two wide receivers. So I think we're probably going to have to go wide receiver because the wide receiver core is really going to fall off if we don't. If I wanted to, if I was drafting normally, I probably would get Cam Akers here, who I think has potential to be a top 10 running back once he becomes the leader in touches, the workhorse back a couple weeks in. I know Mr. Sean McVay, that cute fuck like everyone talks about. Like if you go on your mom's Facebook, she probably talks about how cute Sean McVay is. That guy's a good looking man. But at the end of the day, his looks don't matter. What matters is how good Cam Akers is. And Cam Akers will be good a couple weeks in. But what won't be good is if one of my guys goes down and my starting wide receiver is Jerry Judy for the rest of the season. So we're going to go ahead and get a safe option here in John Brown, Jay Bizzle. I know they brought in Mr. Stephon Diggs of the Vikings, but John Brown tore it up last year. Why the fuck would Josh Allen not throw the ball to his second best wide receiver? He's going to. The, bu- the Bills have an easy sight to being great this year. They've got it in the scope. They can see greatness. They can see, holy shit, we can win the division. Tom Brady's out of there. He's in Tampa Bay. He just lost or in the golf tournament to Peyton Manning. So we're going to draft John Brown here. I like him with Josh Allen last year. He really tore it up. I don't think he has as good a year as last year, but I think he's a safer pick towards the back of the draft. I did not mean to click on Tom Brady's best friend, Mr. James White. So after we went with John Brown, we're probably going to attack the wide receiver well again. So after we went John Brown, Devontae Freeman, came the board, followed by Emmanuel Sanders, Henry Ruggs, James White, Cam Akers, Darius Geis, Darius Slayton, me, Cole Hardman, so two Darius in a row, J.K. Dobbins, Sony Michelle, Matt Burita, Sterling Shepard, Ronald Jones, and Rolls Royce Freeman. So why do people like Darius Geis? I don't understand. This guy is injury prone as they get. He's as injury prone as they get. This motherfucker gets in to preseason, gets hurt his rookie year. The next year, he plays like three games, gets hurt. This guy can't fucking stay healthy to save his life. He's going to get hurt again. Don't believe in it. Don't draft him in the, the eighth round unless you want three fucking games out of a guy. Just don't do it, please. Please do not do it. If you like Darius Geis, Tell me why in the comments, because I think it's bullshit that people even like him. It doesn't make any sense to me. So after we went with those picks, we're to dip back into the wide receiver well and get Deontay Johnson. I talked about him last video. I love, love, love Deontay Johnson. I think if Big Ben stays healthy, Johnson tears it up. Juju is going to be healthy and playing in the slot. If Juju's healthy and playing in the slot, Deontay Johnson will still get some looks in the slot. If Big Ben stays healthy, he's going to develop that chemistry with Deontay Johnson. He's going to be the two on that offense. What type of twos have Big Ben been able to make good? He's done it with A.B. and Juju, and he's done it with A.B. and Martavius Bryant. He's done it with Martavius Bryant. So how can Deontay Johnson not be good? I don't get it. He showed his talent last year with a guy whose head got bashed in in Mason Rudolph and a guy who shoots fucking ducks in Duck Hodges. I believe in Deontay Johnson. I think you should too. Deontay Johnson is my pick here. In the ninth round, after we loaded up on two talented wide receivers, one slightly more risky in Deontay Johnson, and one that is very safe to me in John Brown. So now we're going to have to probably attack the quarterback position in the 10th round. After our pick looking at the board before we decide which quarterback we want, Deontay Johnson can hit the board by us. After that was Jordan Howard, Mike Williams, Allen Lazard, uh, Allen the Lizard, Hunter Henry, Keyshawn Vaughn, Evan Ingram, Duke Johnson, Darrell Henderson. Now, I might be in the minority here, but I don't believe in Alan Lazard. Why do I not believe in Alan Lazard? Because the same fucking shit happened last year with MVS and Geronimo Allison. Half the analysts are tugging off MVS. The other half are tugging off fucking Geronimo Allison. And you know what happened? They both gave you a bukake in the face because they didn't do anything. Why am I going to believe in the wide receiver two on a team that likes to run the ball? Why do it? Devontae Adams is going to be the only target. Lazard will have good games, 
but he's not a fucking sleeper because he won't perform up to your expectations as a sleeper. He's going to bust. He's going to be terrible, and everyone's going to draft him, and I will fucking laugh in your face until I eventually hop on the train with everyone else and start loving Mr. Allen Lizard. So at our pick now, we're probably going to go ahead and get that quarterback and then draft a running back unless I like the running backs here too much. No, I do not. We're going to go ahead and get our quarterback, and it's between Breeze and it's between Brady here. Both in the same division. Do I want Breeze on the Saints, who I think will be good? Or do I want Tom Brady on Tampa Bay, who I think will be good? For this purpose, I'm going to go Tom Brady because I want to talk about him. Tom Brady moves from the Patriots to the Buccaneers. And I think he's going to be great this year. His wide receiver core, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans at tight end. He has two talented guys at OJ Howard and Cameron Brait. His running backs are Keyshawn Vaughn and Ronald Jones. He has all the guys set up around him. He has Dare Agabadouge, who might be the copy of James White at running back. He's going to throw the ball. He's practicing with these guys. They're going to throw the rock. Tom Brady's going to be good. Drew Brees got hurt last year. Drew Brees probably would have been top five quarterback. Tom Brady, if the Patriots didn't suck, could have been a top five quarterback. I'm going to believe in Tom Brady. I'm going to do it again. Now you're getting him at a discount. Back on the Patriots, you had to draft him early. Now he goes to Tampa. People are falling asleep on him. People are thinking it's all over for Tom. It's all over. Fuck you, Tom. Uh, I'm a, All these things. Don't believe in that. Don't fucking Avoid Tom Brady because you hate the guy. I hate the guy. But what I know is he's going to produce in fantasy football 2020. So we're going to go ahead and select Tom Brady of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So after we selected TB12, we're now probably going to just hammer some running backs and some wide receivers to fill out our bench and then go with a defense and a kicker. So to look at the draft board real quick, we still have all the positions we want. We still have all the clean positions. We're not drafting a defense. We're not drafting kicker until the last round. Now, I'm surprised the computer has not selected a defense and a kicker yet because they always do. They always do in like the 12th round, the 11th round. They're like, ha ha ha, let's pick a fucking running back. Or let's pick a fucking defense. It's so funny. Ah, let's pick a defense. And they always do it. And picking a defense early is like getting slapped in the face by Mike Tyson because it's not worth it, all right? After we went with Tom Brady, Alshon Kanth, the board followed by Drew Brees, Jerry Judy, Anthony Miller, Latavius Murray, Robbie Anderson, Sammy Watkins, C.D. Lamb. Does this guy even have it? He has two running backs and, and a quarterback. The rest of his picks were wide receivers. That's the dumbest thing I've ever read. Tyler Higby, Golden Tate, Alexander Madison, Justin Jefferson, Aaron Rodgers, Carlos Hyde, who is now the backup for Chris Carson. Might have some value late, considering Chris Carson has fumble-itis, and Rashad Penny cannot stay healthy if you paid him. So after that, now we're looking for running back. We're going to be going with probably my one of my favorite handcuffs in Mr. Tony Pollard. If Zeke goes down, Pollard will be a boss. Pollard showed last year he was a beast, almost 500 yards, getting 86 touches. 5.3 yards per attempt. Three touchdowns, one fumble, one off against Miami. We'll go off if Zeke goes down. I think he gets more involved this year. I don't think you start him unless Zeke goes down, but he's a great handcuff, and he's a great guy to just ship off to the Zeke owner once that guy shits himself because he forgot to draft Tony Pollard, just like you can do with Alexander Madison when a guy shits himself because he forgot to draft Alexander Madison when he has Dalvin Cook, who's also very injury-prone, so... Kind of surprising here that no one has drafted a defense yet. Preston Williams, Matthew Stafford, Hayden Hurst, Tevin Coleman, Naheem Hines, LaVishka Chenault, Ben Roethlisberger, and Boston Scott. So now we're going to draft probably another running back or a wide receiver here. We don't draft two quarterbacks or two tight ends in these type of leagues. You just drop someone off the bench, pick up a tight end, drop someone off the bench, pick up a quarterback when you need them. So now we're going to go with yet another handcuff who I think could be pretty solid this year, and that's Zach Moss. I think he could emerge potentially as the starter in Buffalo if Singletary doesn't play that well. He's going to be splitting with Singletary, but if Singletary goes down, he could be great. Zach Moss was very talented out of college. His fucking 40, he got his pussy hurt. He ran terrible. We're going to be off of him. I like Zach Moss. We're going to draft him here. He's not a starter. He's not a guy that I'm targeting in every draft, but he's a guy that has the potential to start in or for the Buffalo Bills and could start for your fantasy team just like Devin Singletary did last year as a sleeper after Frank old man Frank Gore went down so finally these assholes picked a bunch of defenses so after one was Zach Moss Austin Hooper 49ers Noah P Noah Fant Rashad Perryman Danny Dimes Baltimore OJ Howard Chase Edmonds uh, AP going psycho Pittsburgh Steelers Kirk Cousins Justin Jefferson Antonio Gibson and Jared Goff you like that Kirk Cousins got picked pretty funny. So we're going to go ahead and get a wide receiver here and then call it a draft, but we obviously have to draft a kicker at a defense. So we're going to go ahead and draft a different late round wide receiver. Last video, we drafted Nikhil Harry. If you haven't checked that out, please check that video out. 
This time, we're going to attack differently, and we're going to go for Corey Davis. Now, I don't think Corey Davis is any good. I don't. What I do know is he's still the wide receiver, too, on Tennessee. A.J. Brown passed him. But Corey Davis should be getting more looks this year. He's, they declined his fifth-year option. The guy's garbage. He was a top-ten pick in the NFL draft a couple of years ago, and he fucking sucks. So what are we going to go ahead and do here? We are going to go ahead and draft Corey Davis and hope he turns out well. In all serious, though, I think that Corey Davis could be good. He's the number two on a team, and it's hard to find the number two option on a team late in the draft, so I think he could be good. I'm not saying he's going to, but you might as well take the chance. Devontae Parker fucking did it last year after four years of being garbage. So another guy I might have taken was Rager or Harry back here. So now it's time to draft our kicker in defense. How you draft a kicker is you just fucking look. You take a kicker. It's easy. I'm going to make kicker rankings. You just draft one of the good ones. Harrison Bucker's nasty for the Kansas City Chiefs. And for a defense, you're going to go on Google, type in NFL schedule week one, find a defense playing a shitty offense week one, and you draft that defense. Then you cut them week two if they have a hard opponent, and then you find a new defense week two. I'm going to make videos about it all season long, and in the summer, I'm going to make a video about it as well for kickers and defenses. So we're going to go with the Saints. Hopefully, the Saints have a good week one opponent. I think it's Tampa, so that's probably a terrible option. But at the end of the day, we would have drafted differently. Once we actually know the schedules by hot shout out to Tom Brady and the Minnesota Vikings, who he is not even on. So we got to see for this draft. That's because when three running backs in a row, they don't like that. They like if you get you fill out the roster before you go to the bench. That's just how fantasy pros is after to look at the draft real quick. We had Tom Brady, Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs, Terry McLaurin, uh, Tyler Boyd, Mark Andrews, CEH, defense kicker don't really matter, Kareem Hunt, John Brown, Deontay Johnson, Tony Pollard, Zach Moss, Corey Davis. If you guys ended up enjoying this video, please click that subscribe button down below. I love each and every single one of you guys. Make sure you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys tomorrow with yet another banger of a video. Goodbye. It's my birthday. I love you all. I really do, though. Everyone who's stick stuck to this far, I love you. I really appreciate you. I'm glad that you like my videos, and even if you didn't like it, you can dislike it. I love you all, though. Have a great rest of your day. See you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.